before we get to the intro, don't look at my hair at all. I'm being serious. If you look at it, it's outside immediately. Immediately. So don't do it. Um, right now, I'm not even going to tell you what it's serving. Okay? You know what it is. Um, hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your boy, Darius. And this video... Oh my god, this is like a once in a lifetime video! Not once in a lifetime, but once in an era, I think. Or, you know, once in every, you know, five, six years kind of thing. And this is for the girls. And it's only for the elite girls. So if you're not an elite girl, leave immediately. Please, leave immediately, actually. Um... And did I say it's your boy Darius? I think I did. I don't know if I did or not. But anyways, a lot of you guys have been requesting me to talk about the Renaissance Beyonce album. And obviously, I could have done this last week. And I don't know why I didn't do that. I should have. Because now I've gotten a week for it to settle and sit. <laughs> and, like, that still doesn't change, like, what I'm going to say in this video. The fact that, I, I mean, like, it kind of does change it. But at the end of the day, it's not going to change the fact that my excitement for it is what I'm saying. But it would just have been a, a, a little bit of a different excitement. Like, just the, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like, hearing it for the first couple times, and I do mean couple, it's been, I think it's been out about a week and, a, and like two days or something as I'm filming this video. And I probably listened to the whole thing all the way through, I would say probably seven or eight times already. Um... I know the lyrics to the songs. <laughs> I know the lyrics. You know, I'm in the music video when I'm uh, listening to it in my headphones and I'm in a mirror. Anytime you catch me in, in front of the mirror and Renaissance is in my ear, I'm in the music video. Um, and I don't even know where to begin because I don't know how to set up this, the format of this video. Do I set it up as like, you know like a reaction video to like play the songs and risk getting copyrighted by Parkwood Entertainment LLC do I want to do that I don't know I don't think so but I feel like I should like there are certain things I want to like specifically talk about but let's just see how we this is going to either cause a lot of editing or it's going to be a really long video I don't know what it's going to be um I I'm going to forewarn you right now in the first three minutes if you are not a Beyonce stan exit immediately Exit immediately, okay? If you do not stand Beyonce, don't play games. I'm I'm being real serious. I've never been more serious in my entire life. If you say a single word in the comment against against Beyonce, I'm sorry. I'm one of the girls. I'm one of those girls. I know people are like, oh, the beehive, the beehive, the fan base, they're crazy, the blah, 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 blah. Block, delete. Do not play games with me. I'm so sorry. I get that it's kind of annoying. But if you have anything bad to say, keep it to yourself if you want to keep a presence on this channel. Anyways, now let's begin. Because I don't think people understand the significance. And there's a lot of things I want to say in this album, which is why I really, really feel like I should have played it. Maybe I'll play the songs and then give you my feedback after each song. Like, and I'll like stop the recording. So the, the the song start. If you haven't also listened to Renaissance, please go listen to it before you watch this video because you just won't understand what I'm trying to say. Um, po obviously, point blank period. If I'm if I'm talking about an album, you should probably listen to it first before you get my commentary on it. Because I'm gonna be talking. I'm going in depth. I'm that girl. Let's talk. About I'm that girl. Um. Okay. Ah, this is a family channel. This is a family channel. But. <laughs> I'm gonna say this just so that no my mercy I was trying to do my voice command anyways this is a family channel so I'm not gonna say actual words that I wanna say but I'm gonna spell it out for you and I'm just gonna say this throughout the video C-U-N-T and if you know you know and if you don't you don't okay that's what this album is giving okay and most people think that that word is a bad word, but it depends on what community that you ask. 
But let me tell you something. When she said that, I think that's the most like boss way to start an album is these M efforts ain't stopping me. And the way it said, <laughs> the way it said doom, 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 the bass in the background. And she said, it's not the diamonds. She was saying, oh my God, this video's gonna be so long. I can't do it. Anyways, she said, it's not the diamonds. It's not the pearls. I'm quite literally just that girl. That's it. I'm just, I, I, I'm just that girl. That's it. You can ask everybody else, everyone you want to know. And, and let me explain something to you guys. What do I want to say? If you haven't caught it, you probably did. But I saw a lot of of people reacting to the album and obviously not understanding the full significance of it because people in today's day and age, like I'm so old, but people in today's day, today's day and age listen to music on a listen by listen basis. And I don't know if, let me explain because that doesn't make sense. It's just like, I'm sorry, to be frank with you, if I listen to, and this is no shade to any other artist, but if I listen to basically, virtually a lot of other artists, it's just, oh, either you like the song or you don't. There's no really meaning behind it. There's no meaning behind the album or the, the work of art. It's more, there might be like, oh, you were in this stage of life when you made this album, so that's why it has significance. But usually by it's a song by song basis. I like this song, I don't like the song. The album Renaissance is a work of art. It is not to be played out of order. Like, obviously it can be, but when you're listening to it for the first time, it is a listen, it is a project. You have to listen to the entire thing together. It's not, oh, I like this song, this is a radio hit, or I like this song, I'll be playing this on repeat. It can be that later on, but when you're first listening to Renaissance, you can't just pick and choose. My friend tried to ask me, oh, well, which songs should I, which songs are, are bops? I ain't telling you nothing. Listen to the whole album. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't separate the, the, the experience of listening to Renaissance without listening to it all the way through, without skipping anything, without, you need to hear the transitions. The transitions in this album, and I don't know if I'm, I'm just not well versed in music, second to none. I just don't know, it's just giving like, the flows of each song like are at the end of each song the beat will switch up and change and all of a sudden you're into the next song without you even knowing but my point is saying this is that this album is about ballroom culture point blank period i don't know if you guys know who uncle johnny is uncle johnny because <laughs> uncle johnny is beyonce's late uncle and i don't know if he was in the ballroom scene but I know that she said that he had influence on like uh, showing her like different house music and dance music of like the 90s and stuff. And also he was a really big part in, um, this is a little side note, a, a really big part in their, the fashion and the design of Destiny's Child. Because back in the 90s, I guess, the big, big designers that were like dressing all these pop stars, you know, for red carpet events and stuff like that, they didn't really want to to dress Destiny's Child. They didn't want to like have anything to do with them. I don't know how serious it was. If it was just like they didn't reach out, or if they were vocally like we don't want to dress them. But she, they said that they always had difficult getting people to dress them. So Tina, um, Tina knows the girl Tina knows, and Uncle Johnny, you know, teamed up and and basically would like hand make the Destiny's Child clothing in the beginning, and so he was a really big inspiration to her and like he, again like he showed her all of this different types of music back in the day and so she decided to de dedicate this album to um to or she tried to she decided to dedicate this album to him and so you can hear a heavy influence obviously that's the point of this album of you know 70s 80s and 90s dance electronic music you know house and that house that we have today, because a lot of people think that we have, obviously we have a way different house than we did before. But whatever. So the ballroom culture in this is literally so iconic. And I think that it's it's the most iconic to the girls who get it. And the girls who get it are the girls who were here for the ballroom culture before the album. And <laughs> that's that's when that's when you're floored. That's when you're gagged. Because like the album is good regardless, if you know. 
about what's the meaning behind it, but when it is, it's tenfold. And so I feel like I sound crazy talking to people who don't know anything about ballroom culture. I'm glad at least that I introduced my mom a little bit to ballroom so that she understood at least a little bit when I was explaining to her some of the songs or whatever, but we'll get into the each individual one. My point is you have to listen to the whole thing, listen to the transitions, and realize that this album is more than meets the eye or the ear, per se. It is not just a a listen-by-listen song basis thing, like, oh, I like this, I don't like this. This is a work of art. So, I'm that girl. Obviously iconic. Um, I think the way she started the song and ended it and her flow on it, I just don't know what to tell you. She said... (laughs) I forgot to play the song. I have to play the song. I'll be right back. This is going to be... A, a cut every time I'm play the song, it's gonna be a cut. All right. I'm only. <laughs> I'm only 33 seconds in. She said. Oh, I, I, this is a family She said. I pull up and these clothes look so good. Cause I'm in it. Cause I'm in the. That's why they look good. Cause I'm in it. And she said. You know. All these songs, they sound real good because I'm on it. And it's the way she, obviously I said it very like, could just, you know, I didn't say exactly what she said. The way she came in and there's like this ju- ju- sorry, juxtaposition, I'm using big words here, of the way the beat comes in real hard and she's just like, you know, I pull up and these clothes look so good because I'm in is me, you know, and you wonder why all these sound all these songs sound so good because I'm on them. It's very like it's very light and flouncy and also like sexy and boss and you know, I don't know how to explain it. Okay, anyways, let me, I, I digress. That's a whole minute and 20 seconds of me talking about literally three seconds of the song. Two things I want to say. First of all, in this album, don't just listen to what she's saying. First of all, do that. Listen to the lyrics and what she's saying. But also listen to the background vocals of this album. That is what you need to listen to because you will be gagged if you just listen to what she's saying in the background. All the ad libs, the harmonies, listen to that stuff. Go go once through and listen to what she's saying in the background. Second of all, the amount of vocal experimentation that Beyonce's doing on this album, there were several times where I was like, who is this? Thinking that it was like a feature. She only has three features on this album. Beam, Grace Jones, and Thames. Every other voice you hear that's not like outrageously different is her. And there was a lot of there was a lot of actual voices that I heard that I thought were outrageously different, and they were just literally just her. There were like some vocal effects on it, and some were just her voice, like that we've never heard before, like her doing some kind of. Anyways, when she said, "I didn't want this power," and in the background you hear, "I ain't want it," I ain't want it. She said, "I ain't want." She said, "I ain't want it." And then, the, and then the, the second part, what she said, I, she said it again. She said, "I ain't want it." What did she say? I didn't want this power. I ain't want it. Just the fa- the way she said it, in the background is like this album. And I heard someone say this. This album is so Beyonce. No, like, have you ever wondered if Beyonce knew that she was Beyonce? Because sometimes I did wonder that. I know now that she knows. I know now that she knows. But there was a time where I questioned, like, does she know that she's Beyonce? And this album is a culmination of the fact that she knows. Hmm. She knows. She said, I didn't want this power. And I'm sorry. I just, I feel like, um, hmm, your fave can never. And um, and I know that to a non-Beyonce stand, this seems like, okay, this is trying it. But it's Beyonce. I don't know what to tell you. I just don't know what to tell you. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to digress because, again, I'm talking about two minutes over a little piece of the song. We're going to get off of I'm That Girl. And we're going to go through other songs because there's a, a few songs where I need you guys to hear what I have to say. 
Okay, I didn't play Cozy, but the thoughts on Cozy, again, the whole album is is obviously going to be added to my to my library. Um, of course, it's Beyonce. This is an era. This is a um, a unique time in anybody's life to be experienced an album dropped by Beyonce because I feel like I don't know how many more we can get. And can we talk about how this is act one? What is act two and three? I just can't imagine that it's three albums. Like, I, is that... That's literally gonna be so insane if that's true but I, I also i just need more i need visuals i need a tour but whatever i digress anyways obviously i'm gonna add every song there are songs that i ha that i love and songs that i like cozy's one that i like i'm that girl i love and then there's also so there's like love and there's also songs that are very repeatable like i can just listen to that song on repeat and like that's gonna be like in my rotation right alien superstar love and repeat she said she said <laughs> i'm too classy for this world forever i'm that girl feed you diamonds and pearls ooh baby i'm too classy to be touched i paid them all in dust okay let's break down those lyrics first of all i think the chorus is just so angelic and like the fact that it is very, if you listen to the instrumental, it is very like, it's giving E.T. It's giving extraterrestrial. It's giving out of this world. Um, but then when you listen to it and she actually said, I'm too classy to be touched. Now let's talk about this part. Because she really meant what she said. Name another, name another untouchable what am I mean by untouchable? Name another celebrity that is as mysterious as Beyonce. Name one. With the introduction of the internet, every celebrity hopped on, including Beyonce, but like kind of late to the train. But we don't know anything about her personal life. We don't know anything about anything but rumors. It's like, oh... Beyonce says doesn't share anything. She keeps her life private. And even when she's in the media, she doesn't say anything. She doesn't talk about anything. She doesn't address anything. Beyonce is ghost. You will not know, ever know the figment. She has culminated what it means. Not what it means, but she's mastered. I don't know how to explain this. She's mastered a, the celebrity aspect of being a celebrity. And no other celebrity. Like, I think she's a celebrity to celebrities. Do you know what I mean? Like, even other celebrities are in awe of what Beyonce is because they don't even know, per se. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so when she's saying she's too classy to be touched, I pay them all in dust. So whether or not, whatever you're saying about me in the media, I'm not going to address it. I'm not going to say anything about it. You're not going to see into my personal life any more than you thought you were going to before. I'm too classy to be touched. I just pay them all with dust. And she's stingy with her love. Like, I just... <laughs> And that makes her an alien superstar. Um, I feel like this is just so crazy. You guys are going to try to get me. I just feel like all the... I just can't... I just... I'm not ready for the haters. I'm not ready for haters. Whatever. I'm just going to go through it because I don't want this video to be a hundred million years long. Cuff it. I feel like falling in love. Cuff it? First of all, tell me that's not a cookout you know a cookout song tell me it's not tell me the girls aren't gonna be in the backyard tell them some i'm in the mood to something up like and that to me is a love and repeat i love cuff it cuff it is so like I don't know. And everyone's like, some some groovy. I feel like groovy is such a weird, like, this is not the 70s. Like, we're talking about something that's groovy. Like, it's so, like, pick up your soul and your body. And, like, literally, you just can't help but, like, move to it. I just said that sounds crazy. But it's so good. And what makes it infinitely better, and let me tell you, it's not just a good song. Not, a, not just an amazing song. The transition from Cuff It to Energy Coco for the 1980s. The the transition, like, who is doing this? 
I know some girls transition. I know some of the girls transition. And maybe I'm not, you know, as well versed on the transition artists. So you got to let me know. And, you know, like what, what to listen to. But the way that Cuffit transitions into energy, like, I don't know. Because this is my thought process. When you're creating an album, it's like, okay, for three years, I'm going to go into the studio and literally spit something over a beat. And if I like it, it's going on the album. Right? And so, therefore, it's really hard to be like, okay, I like these 10 to, to, the, to 14 songs that I want to put on this album. But now I'm going to all of a sudden make them men together. Because usually, if it's over two to three years that you're creating this album, it's going to be hard to, like, morph all of these different sounds together. You might have a cohesive piece, but how do you mend them together? Like, the different songs of different types and different... You're saying different things in each song and different meanings and different feels. How do you do that? The way that Cuff It morphs into energy is, I think, that the is the best transition. It's the culmination of the transitions of the albums. There's one more that's actually iconic, too, which I think is the end of Thick going into All Up In Your Mind, but we'll get to that. Whatever. Let's go. Let's talk about energy. I thought I was just going to eat up the Beyonce verse, but Beam ate this up when he said... First of all, it's like, doom, 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 ba boom, 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 boom. It's like coming off a of cuff it, and he's like, he's like, Coco from the 1980s. It's like so good. But then I just love, like, the chorus part of energy. He goes, energy. What does he say? Um, you, you was on stop mode. Let me put the phone down. Let's, let's, let's listen to this. You was on stop mode, got froze. Froze fun. Froze front page Vogue, no pose. Picture me, picture me froze, froze front page Vogue. Wait, <laughs> no pose. I can't do no pose. <laughs> I just think that's iconic. Froze front page Vogue, no pose. Chat too much, full clip unload. Let me say it again. You was on stop mode, got froze. Froze front page Vogue, no pose. Chat too much, full clip unload. That's that Kodak energy. I just feel like the cadence of it is like, don't, 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 boom, 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 boom. And it's like coming from the cuff it. And he said, you was on stop mode, got froze, froze front page Vogue, no pose. Chat too much, full clip unload. That's that. I just feel like, okay. I feel like I'm, I'm beating a dead horse now. He ate that up. Anyways, so then, one of the best parts? This is one of the, I think there's a couple gag-worthy moments. And I'm going to give you all the gag-worthy moments. Was there any I missed? I probably missed a few. But this is the first one for me that was, like, gag-worthy. When Beyonce came up at the end, and she said, uh, what'd she say? She said, um, um, that's the way them put sound when I walk through the blah, blah, blah. Then not Uzi that doozy. Shot, shot, shot. First of all, Beyonce saying then not Uzi that doozy? It's like so unexpected. Like we've, okay, listen, let me explain something. We've experienced rap Beyonce, you know, we know that she's, she's a, a versatile girl. We know that she's like, you know, she can rap and also like, like people don't think she's the best rapper and obviously she's not trying to be. But the fact that she can even make a song that sounds good with her rapping in it. But just to be so boss and it be like, the nosy that doozy. She like, the way she said it is, that's what, I don't know, that's one of the best parts of energy and one of the best gag worthy moments of the album is when she said, I'm gonna oozy that doozy, shot, shot, shot. <laughs> and I was really waiting for everybody to react to that on, on all the reaction videos I've seen, but they haven't. I don't know why. Well, some of them have, but whatever. So that was energy. And and another thing, the way that Break My Soul fits, and a lot of people you'll hear, a lot of people say this if you've been watching these videos, these like reaction videos, the way that Break My Soul fits into Renaissance versus it being a single. To be honest with you, I think that it was the best choice for them to pick that as a single. Because it didn't give anything away. 
I didn't love the song in the beginning. I think once I played it more, I was like, oh, I like Break My Soul. But I was so confused as to what this era was gonna be with the album. But in the context of the album, coming from energy, Break My Soul just fits so well. And it makes me like the song even that much more. As we're on the topic of Break My Soul, and this is what some of the girls won't get. The girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't. Okay. The remix, the Queen's remix, if you've heard, the Queen's remix of Break My Soul is a mashup of Break My Soul and Vogue by, by Madonna. Okay. If you don't know the significance of Vogue, the song Vogue, came around in the time of ballroom, right? And, um, it was a huge thing. I don't know. I'm getting this off of Pose. So I don't, the show Pose. So I don't know if this is like historically accurate or not, or if there was any like issues with it. But obviously this was something that was done underground. And finally someone on the mainstream stage, someone like Madonna is coming up with a song called Vogue when it, it was, you know, something so big in the black and brown community back during this era of a ballroom watch well, obviously there's, there's ballroom now but like back during when it's basically was created it's like now we're seeing representation in the ma in mainstream media so it was a really huge song and so that's why i i stand by the fact that and you can try it if you want to when beyonce does something she does it all she does not leave a crumb she doesn't miss an avenue there's no there's no un, there's no words that were, were unspoken she does something if she does something she does it all and the fact that she made this album, she's like, what do I need to do to encompass all of all? How do I pay homage? How do I pay respect? How do I do what needs to be done? Like, it's not just, oh, I'm going to, like, steal from this culture and then just, like, not do anything with it. Like, she's doing her research, whether she's doing it or, or her team or whatever. I don't know. But whenever she does something, she does all of it. The fact that she cho chose Vogue, which is such i feel like a, a powerful song for that era of ballroom just the fact that that was something that was represented in mainstream media and she did a remix on it with her song break my soul and then i'm gonna get to the part where first of all she ate that up she said the mother of my house if you don't know i can't explain to you what ballroom is i can't i'm sorry you're gonna have to do your own research on that so the girls that get it they get it the girls that don't they don't the mother of my house. Are you crazy? Are are you crazy? Like, this is, like, this is so insane that Beyonce, like, even knows what this is. Like, obviously, we know Beyonce's a human. But sometimes I feel like I'm just not thinking about the fact that she does, she, like, has a phone. Or she, like, knows things. Like, sometimes I just feel like, again, I feel like she's an alien superstar. And she's a figment of my imagination. So, therefore, she can't know normal people things. And so, I was gagged when she said, the mother of my house. I want to join House of Beyonce. I want to join it. Yeah, I'm going to join House of Beyonce. Um, Because she ate that up. But what I really want to talk about is her talking about all the queens at the end. Obviously, we know that she talked... She can't talk about everybody because everyone's like, well, why she named this person? Why she named that person? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, literally, if she named every single actual queen that we all think are queens, it would the song would be 100 minutes long. And, there, and then there would always be somebody that was missing. So, when she said, Grace... Y'all know what I'm talking about if you heard it. She said, Grace Jones, Aretha, Anita, Grace Jones, give me Nicki Minaj right now or don't give me nothing. Oh, by the way, side note, Nicki Minaj is winning or is getting the video Vanguard Award at this VMAs and I will be tuned in. I have not been tuned in since Beyonce's video get Vanguard Award. Or actually, was Rihanna after Beyonce? I think she was. I tuned in to Rihanna as well. But I will be tuned. Does, one, does somebody win one every year? A video Vanguard Award? Because I don't know who it's been in the past couple years. But anyways, um, Nicki Minaj is winning the Video Vanguard Award. So tune into the VMAs this year. Because she's going to be like doing her whole discography. That is actually iconic. And I will be there for that. But anyways, the again, the voices on the that, she, that she's exper experimenting with. Like kind of this rap voice is not necessarily new new. But we'll talk about other voices that she's doing later. She said, Aretha, Anita. The way she said, Anita. <laughs> And if you haven't listened to it, you gotta go listen to it. And so the end of the song, like towards the end of the song, when she's naming all the songs, she said Grace Jones, Aretha, Anita, Grace Jones. <sighs> Anyways, okay, that's it. Okay, Break My Soul. Church Girl is a popular, it's a favorite. 
But for me, it's just a like. I know people are going to get on me for that. I know that the girls are into um, Church Girl because I think it's like the shock of what the song is. Like you you think that if you haven't listened to it, I'm sorry, I, I try to warn you to come back after you listen to it. So I'm going to spoil it for you. Church Girl is not a slow, you know, church choir ballad like you think it is. Um, and I do think she, she ate with that. But I don't feel like for me, it's like a repeat song or a love song. Not a love song, but like a song that I love so, so, so much. Right? Still at it, by the way. I, I don't. I hope you guys don't get it twisted. This is not. I, I, when I say a song is less like, that's all it is. It's less likable. It's not like I don't like any song. Like there's not any song in this album that I don't like. It's just a little bit less likable than another song. At the end of the day, it's still going in my 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 library. Are you crazy? Um, plastic off a sofa. I think this stint of Church Girl and Plastic off my sofa was like a dip in the album where. Again, a less likable part. And I know people are gonna love, people love both Church Girl and Plastic Off the Sofa. I just, I don't know. I, I like, I love R&B Beyonce. Obviously that's where she came from and I've listened to every single album and all the R&B songs and everything like that. But I like this Beyonce more that she's, that she's playing with. So for me, that part was a dip. I was like, I don't know. Cause I wanted to get back to what the rest of the album was like this I'm that girl kind of thing. Not the song I'm that girl, but like the aura of I'm that girl, right? Okay, whatever. Plastic off the sofa, the vocals. Let me tell you guys something. I know Beyonce is, she's proven to you time and time again that I don't know why people say Beyonce is overrated. I don't get it. Cause when you can sing like she can, and when you can dance and put on a show like she can, and create albums like she is and be the figment of imagination that she is as an alien superstar, I don't understand how you are saying that she's overrated. If you're going off of vocals alone, she's in the top five in the industry. I'm so sorry. She's, and you can you can disagree with me. Go talk to your mom about it, but not me, okay? Don't talk to your mom about it. Uh, talk, oh wait, I'm sorry. Talk to your mom, not me. Sorry, I messed that up. <laughs> Anyways. Don't talk to me about how you don't think that she can sing because she can. And you know she can. Um, and the girls are mad. Like, there's a lot. I'm not not discrediting anybody who... Because I think that there's different types of voices. I'm not discrediting, like, someone like Fantasia. Voice of a generation. Fantasia. Ariana Grande. Jasmine Sullivan. To me, Jasmine Sullivan has, like, I think she's, like, the voice of our generation. Not our generation, but, like, alive right now. I just love that. And that's, again, everything is objective. But, oh, I love Jasmine Sullivan's voice. But whatever. Plastic Off a Sofa shows Beyonce's, like, and also Virgo's, the end of Virgo's Groove. And we're going to get to get Virgo's Groove in a second. But Plastic Off the Sofa is a very good song. Again, I just like other songs better. Virgil's Groove. Love and repeat. She said, baby, come up, uh, baby, come over. When you hear, like, the production of these songs, it's insane. It's like, you can hear, I just love the electronicness of the baby, come over in the background. I feel like if you don't know these songs very well, if you haven't been listening seven, eight times like me, you probably don't. You're probably like, I don't remember that part. If you only listen to a couple songs or you didn't listen to all of it, whatever. But I'm just telling you right now, you should listen to all of it. Virgo's Groove is one of my favorites on the album. Um, love and repeat. Move. I actually need to play move before I... I need to play move. I'll be right back. And and no, no, I'm not playing with you. First of all, my voice is about to go away <clears throat> because of all the amount of screaming I feel like I've been doing listening to these songs. Let me say something. Um, how do I put this? You need to listen to the song either in bass heavy headphones or in a car. Because move out the oh. She said move out the way. Okay. I'm with my girls and we all need space. It's, this is not this is not a polite ask. This is not like, you know, oh, like, oh, I'm feeling myself kind of song. Like, oh, like, this is like, oh, I'm, I'm a boss. Like, no, this is move out the way. Like, 
It's so convincing. It's not like, this is not made up. This is not like, oh, I made this song. This is move out the way. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it any better than that. I feel like I'm doing a bad job. She said, move out the way. She said, I'm with my girls and we all need space. Okay? Like, I need to ba ba basically like, I need to say it. And not sing it basically so you understand how serious how serious she is move out the way okay i'm with my girls and we all need space and when the queen come through part like the red sea move out the way and then when she said how many times have i said oh the reason why i want you to listen to a bass and bass have in the car it hits different the doom 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 if you know you know i just feel like i sound so crazy saying this but if you know you know at at the end of this video go listen to move and listen to the doom doom and the bass of it is it slaps so hard i'm telling you this when she releases the tour dates what if she said i'm done touring like i just i can't do it anymore i would actually throw up if you guys didn't know, I would be so I would probably start crying. If she actually came out with the statement saying like I can't tour anymore, like I'm done. The, the um Coachella was the last thing you ever saw me do. <sighs> I would be heartbroken. Because I'm not joking. I would I will spend upwards of two thousand dollars on a ticket. Like I'm going to be front row at this this next uh this next tour. Like and it's I'm I'm and I'm flying to a big city and staying in a hotel. This is not this is an extravaganza. You know, this is not a, oh, like, oh, she coming to my town, my city. No, I'll go to her. Yeah, I'll go to her. Um, I'll be in front row, tell me some, and I'll be the man with something. Move out the way! The base, I'm sorry. And what is the, I've never been to a real concert before. What's the best place to sit? Like, I, I feel like if you sit, like, all the way in the front, that's not a good spot either. Because, like, you know, you kind of like are like looking for her i feel like i don't know where's the best place where i can see everything and also see her on the screen but also see her in real life but not be like not like where you're too close where the screens are like kind of right here and they're too big do you understand what i'm saying i don't know if that's a thing or not but whatever she said move out the way i'm on my girls and we all need space and when the queen come through part like the red sea you better part like the red sea you better you better part like the Red Sea. Mm-hmm. What the way? How many times have I said? It's not even like... It's like so like... How many times have I said? She's giving RuPaul! Now, I'm not, I'm not a, um, a, a drag race girly like that. But it's very like... How many times have I said? Or it's, it's Wendy Williams. How you doing? How you doing? It's how many times have I said? It's like I, the way she ate that. I'm sorry. What else did she say? She said uh, how many times? Have I, she said it's a home run with a team touch base. Um, and then she said, "Find me. I don't need to call him. I don't need to phone you. I don't need to call him. you." know, I don't know the lyrics yet, but I'm vibing. I don't know the lyrics of this song. Okay. Um, is there anything that I'm missing in this song? She said, this is how I move. This is how I move. Yes. Okay. All right. Next. And I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you. Is everyone ready for the statement? And I, this is definitely an unpopular opinion. I know. I think. Maybe some girls get it. They, they get it. But he did is the best song on the album. I'm so sorry it's the best song on the album. And let me tell you why. First of all, it continues this, you know, it continues this like, I'm that girl, again, not the song, but the aura, the feel of I am that girl in such a light and like bossy, bougie way. It's like, um, what did she say in the beginning? Let me pause it for a sec. I think I need to listen to this song too so I can be excited again. First of all, when I played that song, my phone got heated because it literally like did the temperature thing. I don't know, it was, it's not that hot in here, but I don't know why I did that. Anyways, hopefully it doesn't do it again. I put it up against the AC. 
Now, um, you better be glad that happened because otherwise I'll be screaming right now. Um, uh, because, again, Fight With Your Mama. Heated is the best song on the album. And let me tell you why. Okay. Let me tell you why. There's two parts to this song. Oh my God! There's, there's two parts to this song, okay? There's a, norm, there's a regular part of the song where she's like, First of all, again, giving on that girl. She said, Got a lot of bands. Got a lot of MS on me. That's the first thing she says. If you don't know what she's saying, the first line is, Got a lot of bands. Got a lot of Hermes on me. I've got to fan myself off. I've got to fan myself off. I gotta cool it down. Heated. It. It's like, I just, I'm, I'm dripping money, I have money, you know, my currency is money, my language is money. And I, sometimes, sometimes in the event where I'm too hot, I do need to cool myself off. You know, I need a fan or two, you know, because I'm dripping, you know, in Tiffany, in Chanel, you know, in Ivy Park, my own brand. I have, I'm a business, I'm a mogul, you know, like the Hermes is on me. You know, I, I, I'm not wearing the Hermes. The Hermes is, is on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. Okay, but my point is, that's not even the, the part that's iconic and gag worthy. Oh, this is the most gag worthy song on the album. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. What is that? Oh, what is that? I don't know, it looks like a huge, big, fat beetle with wings. And he's doing this with his hands, like a fly. It's not in my car or in my car. Oh, if it was in my car, I would be singing like Beyonce. Don't play with me. Anyways, it was, um, it's on the garbage can next to me. But, so she said, got a lot of bands, got a lot of Tiffany on me, right? But at the end, let's talk about the last minute and 24 seconds, because I was gagged. I thought this was, some, this is what I'm talking about. I thought this was somebody else. I thought this was, when I first heard this song, I thought this was some, like a feature. Cause at first she didn't have the features listed. So I was like, oh, this is somebody else that's, that's featured on the album. Once you listen to this song all the way through and you're gagged at the end, and I'm gonna get to the Okay. Once you listen to the whole thing through, once, you will then, let me say what you need to do. You need to go listen to it again. Okay. And this time, listen to it again but listen closely okay because you will realize the last 24 last one minute and 24 seconds of this out this thing just wants to turn off i'm so mad the last minute and 24 seconds of this song is sprinkled throughout the actual first part of the song in the background vocals i told you guys to listen to background vocals I, I, you better listen to me you better listen to me if you want to be gagged she said I gotta fan myself off. And it, it's just in the background. And it's from the, the back part. Or when she says, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Johnny. When I tell you the like third or fourth time when I read she was saying, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Johnny. I was gagged. Remember I told you about Uncle Johnny? I told you about Uncle Johnny, didn't I? He's making an appearance in this song, okay? Because at the end, she says, can I, I feel like I have to, oh my God. She said, tip, tip, tip on hardwood floors. 10, 10, 10 across the board. Give me face, 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 face. Yeah, your face card never declines. My God, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Beyonce say eat it. I already know that I'm just, oh my gosh. I won't, I'm not gonna have a voice if I go see her in person. I'm not gonna have a voice. And I'm going to cry, too. I am going to cry. I'm sorry. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to cry. She said, eat it. Eat it. Eat it, eat it, eat it. You better tell them to eat it, Beyonce. I'm sorry. Dude, I just... <laughs> this is so... I'm, I'm, I just I just know I'm, a, I'm from a distance. If you're not a, a stand of the beehive, this is annoying. But she said... Sorry about the laundry basket. I just took my clothes in the dry cleaners. But anyways, she said, eat it. Eat it. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Mmm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Make a bummy heat it. Make that pretty girl tuck that. 
glitter on my kitty. Cool it down, 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 my pretty bad, bad, bad. Make a bad glitchy. It's the family channel. This part right here. Fine, 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 fine. That's why I was like, this is not Beyonce. How does she eat like this? Tell me how she did. Liberated, living like we ain't got time. Yada, 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 boom, boom, ka, ka. Okay, this is what made me upset because I went on Twitter and everyone was like, oh, well, she, oh, great, some great lyrics you had, Beyonce. That is just the most ignorant statement you could have possibly said. Because then again, people don't understand the significance of this album. They don't know. And if you don't know, you have a lot to say in the press. You do. You do. Because everyone was like, everyone was talking about this last minute and 24 seconds of Heated. And there are some people like, what kind of lyrics are these? Because they don't know. They don't understand. That ballroom, this, I just know. I want to see a ballroom girl react to this. Because the ballroom girls have to be gagged. They have to be. They have to be gagged. I don't. I'm, I don't know if I haven't seen it. I don't know who to watch. But the ballroom girls have to be gagged. She said, "Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it." And then she's first of all this yada 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 yada. That is like vernacular. You realize that these MCs in these ballroom scenes are freestyling over these beats, and that is very normal to be saying you know, some coherent stuff and some not coherent stuff because it's not about what you're saying. It's about the feel of the song. It's about a f the feel of the melodies. Of It's just like, it's like very, again, C-U-N-T, Miss Thing. It's very C-U-N-T. It's yada yada. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you're saying, really. It doesn't, no one's listening to what you're saying. It's the cadence. It's the flow. It's the melody of what you're saying. And... She said, and this is the, the truest statement, the truest line of probably her, her whole entire career is Monday I'm overrated, Tuesday on my D. Monday I'm overrated, Tuesday on my D. That is what is Beyonce. I don't know. Like, at first I used to be like, be like okay, Beyonce's Beyonce. I don't really see anybody hating on Beyonce. Because it, it used to be like, okay, well, I would hear some people say Beyonce's overrated. But now I feel like people are coming out in the groves trying it. And they know, I just, I, I feel like then the next day they're like, just pick a side. Pick a side. And I have a, I have a personal experience about people thinking that she's overrated. And then the next day thinking she's not. Like, what are you? Just, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, pick a side. Monday I'm overrated. Tuesday on my D. And then she said, flip, flop, flippy, flip, flop it. Fan me off. I gotta grab onto something. This is insane. He did is the best song. I'm so sorry. Again, argue with your mama. I don't know what to tell you. He did is the best song. And I feel like I have to move on at this point. But the last minute and 24 seconds encompass everything that Renaissance means to me. Because you know how many times I rewinded, rewinded her saying, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Let me put you guys back. I'm just, I just don't know. I just really don't know what to tell you. When she said, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, I was floored. I had to pause the song and restart it. She said, mm, yummy, 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 make a bummy, heat it. Make that pretty girl tuck that. Okay, I'm, I'm done. Let me pause it right now. I'm going to go to the last final four songs. I think it's final six songs or whatever. I know this is a long video. I'm sorry, but bear with me. I just thought about something. But anyways, okay, thick. Oh, oh, I have to show you. That almost took the life out of me. Do you see this? First of all, that is literally a baby tarantula. I'm not joking. It has those like two like front things. Um, oh my God. Why is every creature, I guess they hear me talking about Beyonce and they're like, I want to hear about it. They want to hear the tea. Because... What is going on? All these creatures are near me. I'm glad I'm in the car and they're not in here with me. Oh, it, it jumped away. I think that was a jumping spider. But anyways, what was I saying? Okay. Um, I think I forgot what I was going to say. Thick. Everyone was claiming a song. That's what I was going to say. Everyone was claiming a song when they heard when this found the track list came out. And I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't know it was such a cultural reset. that every, But every video 
that I, I think that was funny. I'd seen like one or two people say that, but I didn't know like everyone was supposed to do that because every, every, every reaction video I, I saw, they were like, okay, this is the song I claimed. And I was like, well, dang, everybody was claiming a song. I was just ready to listen to the album. But people were claiming thick. I, again, hmm. Let me see if I'm making a mistake saying this. Da Uchi Gucci la la. Actually, she didn't eat. <laughs> Obviously, she ate. But the question is, I just again, for me, it's not a repeat. I mean, it is a repeatable song, but it's a like. I think it's a like repeatable, but it's not a love repeatable. Does that make sense? I'll go back and show you all my love repeatables after. But um, I do like thick. I especially like the thick transition between thick and all of your mind. And now let me tell you something. All of your mind is an underrated bop. It's an underrated bop. Um, I was talking to Malik about this because we were trying to explain our, our top songs and I forgot to mention All Up In Your Mind. But All Up In Your Mind is so different. I don't think that people understand that it's so different. It's like, especially for Beyonce, it's just so like experimental. The, 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 um, the instrumental is so electronic and like again otherworldly i feel like it's also to me all up in your mind and i thought about this last night when i was trying to figure out what I, what I might say on this video all up in your mind is giving xo it's giving beyonce self-titled i feel like it, it has if if beyonce were a little bit more experimental on the beyonce self-titled this song would have fit on there she said, I try to get all up in your mind. It stops that time. And it's, su it's such like a, and it's so, oh my God, I didn't think about this. If you read the lyrics and listen to the progression of the song, she gets progressively more, this song's about being crazy. The song is about being crazy. And she's like really wanting to be this, you know, man's woman, right? And she's like, I try to get all of your mind. Like, I'll commit a crime and I'll do the time just to be yours, basically. And you can hear the derangement in her voice. It's, like, so iconic. Like, you can hear the progression of being crazy more and more in her voice. She said, you need a really wild one. You need a... She said, you need me on your team? Oh, my gosh. She actually ate. What did she say? Um, It's just, like, you can hear... She said, I knew that I could get it at him. Like, you can see, I can't even do, give it justice, obviously. But, like, the grunge in her voice when she's doing that. Iconic. America has a problem. <laughs> okay. Now, first, when we, when we, when we saw the tracklist come out, again, I was talking about this. When we saw the tracklist come out, we were like, okay, again, with, with Lemonade Era, she was becoming very political. It was like, it was, you know, we're black, we're here, we're proud. This is, you know, our music. This is for us, by us. Like, and I'm going to become the black staple that I need to be, is what Beyonce did during, during the Lemonade Era. And so when we saw this track list, we were like, okay, America has a problem. This is going to be something about you know, police brutality or, you know, whatever the case may be about black people in America, right? That's what we thought it was going to be. But then we listened to, oop, we listened to the, to the album and the song is very like about her. It's like, what? What's going on? And then like, you know, some people didn't pay it in mind. You should have paid it in mind. You should have paid it in mind. Because let me say some. The problem that America has. <laughs> if you listen to the lyrics, she is the problem. Oh no, she. Let me let me rephrase this for you. You would think that the song was about an actual issue in America, and don't try to tell someone. Well, she did a lot because she should have been talking about justice, justice issues. She's done that before, and she still continues to do it. So don't try it. Just because she just because she titled the song America Has a Problem doesn't mean she has to be going real political and real deep because she's done it in the past, okay? She is the problem. Am I am I am I getting this across right? She's saying America is obsessed. 
and she's the drug. So I, I didn't know if this was true or not, but I had this inkling because my, you know, Malik told me, he was like, hey, have you ever realized that she's the problem? And I was like, I don't get what that means. And so I listened to it again. And then I realized that it's not just she's the problem. She is the drug. She, America's a problem is a reference to, I think it has something to do with the, like not the war on drugs, but like the drug issue that people, that back in that era we had, right? Or I don't know, I'm 21, leave me alone. Anyways, um, the drug issue, right? She's saying that she is the problem. Like she is the drug problem. Like you, you, you can't get any higher than this. Like when you consume me, you will never be any higher. Dead on arrival! Dead on arrival. What is she doing? Like, why? Well. Sometimes I need to calm down and, like, just breathe. But seriously, like, why did she do that? I'm, I'm, I'm upset. I don't like Beyonce. I really don't. I don't like Beyonce. Because this is rude to everybody else who ever thought about doing music. I think this is rude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, everyone else might, hang it, might as well hang it up flat screen. I'm so sorry. She said, she said, you, you, you're not going to ever get higher than this. Like, I am, I, America has a problem and it's me. I'm the problem. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm the problem. I got the girls doped up on the streets. That's me doing that. You guys you guys can't wait till I, I step up on the scene. You guys can't wait for me to release a lick of a soundtrack of of, of, of a song of a anything. I'm the drug. Oh, just has me dead on arrival. Like, if you didn't know that, like I feel like now listen to it again and realize what she actually meant. Like that is so gag worthy. It's like I'm the drug. <laughs> like, isn't that is that not iconic? Uh, Pure slash honey. C U N T C U N T C U N T. Miss Thing. And they even said the song. Now I had this song. I had the song saved in my library of the song that she sampled, and I had it months and months ago, right? Oh, I have to play this song. This part. I hope I don't get copyrighted. But this this part has to be played. This part has to be played. This this part has to be played. I, there's a part in the song that has to be played for you, and we'll talk about it in a second. Okay, I'm hoping and praying that this doesn't get me copyrighted, but I got the clean version just in case any youngins are watching. <laughs> I said youngins. Anyways, okay. Oh my god, oh god, I'm not ready. And this is gonna be. I just. <laughs> I don't. Think you're, I don't think you guys are gonna be as gagged. I think I'm, I'm overdoing it, just a little bit. I don't think you might be as gagged as I am currently and i was when i first heard this but this song had this song that she's sampling has significance to me because i already knew about it before but listen to this okay that's it that's it Can't get through. Should I go? Should I go? Should I go left? Should I go? Should I go? Should I go right? Okay. First of all, if you heard the song, she said she's saying bad bees to the left. Okay. Money bees to the right. And she's sampling a song. We're in the song. He goes, and I think this is so C-U-N-T. I'm sorry, this is so C-U-N-T, I'm sorry. And if you don't know what that is, I actually, I just can't, I can't be the one to explain everything to you. I'm so sorry. I can't be, one day I will, you know, if you want me to, but I, I just can't bridge the gap. I'm trying to bridge the gap between, you know, ballroom and everything. I can't be the one. I'm really, I shouldn't be the one. I shouldn't be the spokesperson, but whatever. Anyways, it's so C-U-N-T. He said, I can't get through. It's like, I don't know. <sighs> It's so hard to explain to someone who doesn't understand. It is so, again, it is so C-U-N-T. 
I can't get through. Should I go? Should I go? Should I go left? Should I go? Should I go? Should I go right? It's like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It is so, ugh. I'm just mad. I'm mad at Beyonce. I'm mad. Because she killed this. She did it. She knows she did too. I'm mad. And just the fact that it's, that is so like iconic. And I don't know how to explain. It's like the lyrics are like, okay, like what, what can you not get through? I don't get it. I don't get it either. But it's just like, it's just there. Like we, the girls who get it, get it. And the girls who don't, don't. And I'm one of the girls that just happen to get it, even though I don't really get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't get through. It's like, so like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like, you guys know that, if you know that, that sound, you know it. But she said, or he said, um, I can't get through. Should I go, should I go, should I go left? And it's like, so, oh, should I go, should I go, should I go right? It's, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I can't, because I feel like I sound crazy. And the girls that just, I, I'm sure that most of the girls don't get it. Am I crazy for saying that? I don't know. Oh, you got to be a certain type to, to understand how, why this is gag worthy. He said, I can't get through. I'm done. Summer Renaissance, the last song on the album. It's so good, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. You hear the raspiness in my voice because I've been screaming. Anyways, I wanna house you and make you take my ring, my name. That's iconic. Anyway, she ate that up, but the real gag, this is the last gag of the album. And I can't believe she did this. And I can't believe it went so unnoticed. Because people who are listening to the album were like, okay, that was a good album, blah, blah, blah. No. Don't try to skip over this part. My girl said, oh my God. I don't even know if I can say it. My girl said, she said, you guys, she said, applause. A round of applause. Who ends an album saying, oh, I know I ate this. And you're going to give me my coin. And you're gonna applause too. She said, applause. A round of applause. Oh, oh, I was applauding. I was doing it. <clears throat> yeah, I was already doing it. You didn't have to tell me. She said, applause. A round of applause. And I already know, mark my words, Renaissance tour. She's gonna be saying, I won't 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 what I won't 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 I won't 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 sing I won't 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 what I won't 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 I won't won't hey I want your soul I want your spirit That's what she's gonna be saying And I can not wait Are you insane? Oh I'll be doing the callbacks I'll be doing the callbacks when she goes You know you know how Beyonce is when she goes sing louder Oh louder Oh I can get louder I feel like this is literally the most crazy I've ever acted on a video. I'm sorry, but this is just applause, a round of applause. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. She said, the <laughs> she said, the more I want, the more I need it. I can't even sing anymore. And then she said, Need it. That part. Mm. Prada Balenciaga. Beton Dior Givenchy. Collect your coins, Beyonce. So elegant and raunchy. I'm flaunting. Birkins them in storage. I'm in my bag. She said, I don't even wear, like, what, what, y'all got me confused with, with somebody else who's a B or a C list celebrity. Okay, we, we get you got money. You have a Birkin. Okay, that's great. My Birkins are in storage. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, my, I don't wear them. They don't, they don't get worn. I have them, I have them in storage. I'm trying to feed my, my, my grandchildren's grandchildren. This is, this is on some 30, 30, you know, this is on some 3,025. Those Birkins, they're in storage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, piece of my 4C hair was in my hair <laughs> In my mouth <laughs> Anyways <laughs> I almost ate it um, Anyways, she said Birkins Them in storage I'm in my bag Um, And I also want you to, to, to Understand that in the, earlier in the album 
What she say? She said, label girls. She didn't say girls. Can't clock this. She's basically saying like, you might be into fashion. You might think that you know, that you know, you know, but you don't know. You don't. Because you really don't. Like, unless, unless you really know, you really don't know. You don't. That's why my Birkins are in storage. I know what a Birkin is. I have plenty of them. They're in storage. But the stuff that I'm wearing, you got to do some 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 research. You got to do some research. You you might think that you know off of a glance. You don't know what I'm wearing. Don't even try it. Because... You might think that you know, but you don't know. So don't even think that you, don't even say that you know because you don't know, okay? Anyways, if you want to know my rating on the album, it's an 11 out of 10, okay? Maybe you want a 15, 15, 18 out of 10, okay? Don't play with Beyonce in any era, in any stage, in any anything. Don't play with her. And and I get that some girls don't get it because you're you're, Oh my God, this is my biggest pet peeve. I miss old Beyonce. I miss when she was doing R&B. Okay, listen to her when she was doing R&B. Yeah, she has plenty of albums. Plenty. Plenty where she's she's giving soulful. If you want more of it, go back. Mm-hmm. Go back. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a good alternative. You want R&B, listen to Jasmine Sullivan. Well, I need to be talking about Jasmine Sullivan in a video. But anyways, go somewhere else. Beyonce is evolving. If you don't want her to evolve, go somewhere else. Get a new artist. Get somebody else. Beyonce is evolving. And to me personally, every era that she's been in has been iconic. I'm so sorry. A lot of people agree. Maybe you don't agree. And that's okay. Find another person. There's plenty of R&B artists out there. And I know Beyonce is Beyonce when it comes to everything. And so it might be a little hard to go from, to Beyonce, from Beyonce R&B to somebody else. But go... Oh, there's plenty of girls doing R&B. Plenty of them. Let Beyonce evolve and do the music she wants to do. And if you like it, then you like it. If you don't, go listen to the stuff that you do like by her. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to always be like, well, where's the R&B at? I miss old Beyonce. I hate that with all artists. It's like, I miss old so-and-so. They can't grow. Like, they can't, like, do anything but the first thing that they ever did. That sounds insane. Like, why can't they grow as an artist and experiment? They're not, they're literally not here just to make you happy they're here because they want to make music for themselves that they like and they're that they evolve with and that they're experienced different experiences in their life or whatever the case may be and if you like it that's great but if you don't then it's not for you so that's all i have to say is that yes beyonce is not doing you know r&b like she used to but i am here for whatever she is doing every time okay every time and let's talk about little, lastly again oh i was gonna tell you my favorites favorites that are these are repeats and loves alien superstar cuff it energy virgo's groove heated all up in your mind america has a problem in pure honey i'm sorry I, that's like literally eight songs but and again that doesn't mean every other song is bad by any means it just means that those were like heavenly songs that I will always be, be, be playing. I just don't know what to tell you. Oh, Heated. The last thing I was going to say is about Heated is my number one song on the album. And everyone was like, oh, this song is so good because good Drake wrote it. I will tell you, it is another thing being a black woman in the industry. The amount of racism and misogyny. Let's talk about it. Because, or just in a woman in music in general. You can't do nothing and be good. Like, you cannot be great. Like, Beyonce, at the end of the day, obviously, Beyonce is great. And, and, at the, and like, people love Beyonce. You know, and I'm not alone in loving Beyonce. But there will always be a hater. And it'll be, like, the craziest things. Like, literally, Drake is mentioned as a writer on the song. I think Beyonce, he's the first writer and Beyonce's the second writer. And I don't know, I, I thought that he produced the song. 
I don't know the, the details, but whatever. I don't know if he's a writer or a producer or whatever. But they're like, oh, the only reason why the song is good is because Drake wrote it. I can almost guarantee you. Let me let me say this. Let me say one thing. What, what didn't Nicki Minaj say that? She said, let, no, let me just say this. Um, but anyways, I can almost guarantee you. I'm not saying that Beyonce did, but I can almost guarantee you that Drake did not write that last one minute and 24 seconds when she said, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. I'm just, because if he did, where was that on his album? Because I would have ate that up. Oh, I would have ate it up. If you told me to eat it, I would have ate it. If he told me to eat it, I would have ate it, okay? I promise you, if he said, tip, 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 tip on hardwood floors, 10, 10, 10 across the board, I'd have been there, okay? I would have. And I just don't think that Drake, again, Drake, I do I actually do love Drake as like a, as a, a celebrity person. Does that make sense? I keep like saying celebrity in this like weird way, but like, I like his music. I like what he stands for. You know, I don't know about anything that he's done that's ever been problematic, so I'm not gonna like address anything. But like, I just think that he, I just like Drake a lot. I don't know, I like him. Not necessarily, I don't like love, I think I, okay, whatever, I'm not gonna talk about anything else. But anyways, I just don't think that he wrote that woman in 24 seconds at the end, he couldn't have, because the girls would have gagged. I guess it's not his demographic at all, at all. His demographic is not at all the people to be, you know, eating up, eat it. But I would have ate it up. Um, and I just don't think that he has it in him to do that. And if he did, oh, if he, if I come to find out, if I found out he wrote that last woman in 24 seconds, It'd be over for Drake. I'd be a Drake stan. I'd be, what is this fan base? Cause I, whatever it is, I'd be one of the girls. I'd be, I would be leading it. It would be a rally in Ohio for Drake. And I don't know what I would be telling the girls because if he said, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Can you picture Drake doing that? I would actually gag. Anyways, all right, I gotta go. I know this has been so long and I really do appreciate if you got all the way through with me because like this is kind of like for the beehive only. Um, it's for the beehive only. And if you got it, you got it. If you didn't, you didn't. And I really hope that you did get it. And I and even if you didn't get it, I hope that I made you understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope I made you get it a little bit because this album is much more than what you think it is. And ballroom is so important to the community of ballroom. I'm not in ballroom, obviously, but not obviously, but... I do want to go to a ballroom show. But anyways, um, because when it was created, this was like the family of LGBTQ people back when the AIDS and HIV epidemic was hitting so hard and everyone was turning a blind eye because no one cared that it was happening to, to LGBTQ people. Um, and so, you know, vaccines and all this other stuff are very not that there's a, a vaccine now, but it's much more manageable to, if you have HIV or AIDS. But people were just dropping and dropping like flies. Like people were going to funerals every other week. It was this person died, that person died. And ballroom for a lot of those people who were in ballroom was like home. It was like a place, the place to be like, that was your family. And the fact that Beyonce cultivated or what does cultivated mean? She like, uh, what am I trying to say? The fact that she is paying homage to that group of people. And like, it's almost like what they didn't go through, what they went through. I'm not going to say like, she's literally God and what, what they went through wasn't in vain. But it was just like, it's just like, it just is so nice to see this kind of representation in for Beyonce to make an album paying respect to something as underground as ballroom like now it's way less underground than it used to be we have shows like legendary and pose and all of these like you know the kids on tiktok who are doing the vogue and stuff or whatever like all of the, those things are making it more mainstream but the fact that beyonce decided to make her seventh studio album to pay homage to something that has been so underground for so so many years and the meaning that ballroom has to all those people like that were literally like, this is that's all they had because they were kicked out of their homes for being LGBTQ and then they had to face diseases all plaguing the community and they were just going to funerals and there was no happiness but within the ballroom and like they would just dance and be fun and free and all this new music was emerging and they were like they were so talented and 
you know but it was so underwatched it was so underappreciated it was like you know we're all going through this we have something that we go through that's in common and we are experiencing it together and like ballroom is our home but the girls don't know like the girls that get it get it and the girls that don't they really don't get it and beyonce the fact that she got it and she's trying to make other girls get it like that is just again that ties this whole thing home to me that's why the album is so like i don't know it means a lot it's more than just about like a, oh the album is amazing regardless whether you know about ballroom or not the album is good but it just means that extra umph when you know about again i'm only 21 so i wasn't in the ballroom scene back in the 80s and 90s but if i was if i was like if i was beyonce's age now and i was like let's say i was 45 and i was i grew up in the ballroom scene like that would that would touch me the fact that like wow we've come so far like from being like 1920 in the ballroom scene and like worried that i could get killed on my way out just for being lgbtq in a bad in new york city you know what i'm saying and then now in 2022 seeing and literally a plus 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 list celebrity um like someone like beyonce to pay homage and now you're hearing the sounds that you grew up with that you that 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 got you through those hard times and she's saying everyone else like this this has been going on and like like this it already exists and i'm i'm elevating this culture to the mainstream i'm i'm beating a dead horse but she actually just ate i'm sorry she did and um i hope that you got all the way through this and if you did i appreciate you guys liking liking my last video and being so supportive that was actually so nice i read all the comments and literally all of them were nice um so what was i gonna say so say Hmm. Say the word heated. You can talk about heated if you want to, but if you got to the end of this video, just type the word heated and maybe a fire emoji if you have it. Um, I appreciate this so much. This literally took me so long. And next time, if if you guys are around next time or whatever, and there's another album, I'll actually do a a, a, a reaction video because oh my god, you guys would have you guys been floored with me if. I actually don't know. You guys, you guys should have been there when I was listening to the album. It was literally insane. Um, but anyways, I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's been like an hour. I appreciate you staying for the, the longest time. Heated in the comments if you did make it this far. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.